Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani, and for today's lesson we're going to be learning about asexual reproduction. Now life is extremely dependent on reproduction and a related process called cell division because reproduction is basically the only way organisms have for passing on their genetic information from one generation to the next. Also, if you think about it, without reproduction, life would cease to exist. There are two types of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. This week we will focus on asexual reproduction and then next week on sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction involves basically a single parent. Offspring are genetically identical to that one single parent and they're essentially clones of that parent. There are a few ways that asexual reproduction can occur. The simplest just involves cell division. One cell divides into two identical cells. Of course, this is something that is done by single-celled organisms. So this type of asexual reproduction is common in protists and bacteria, and essentially it involves just one single cell dividing into two after making a copy of their genetic material and making sure that each new cell gets a copy of that genetic material or DNA. The process is called binary fission, and here you can see in this first picture a paramecium, which is a, a eukaryotic protist that is just separating into two cells. This is a slide showing bacteria reproducing through binary fission, a form of asexual reproduction. Another form of asexual reproduction is something called vegetative propagation. This is common in plants. Vegetative propagation, like all asexual reproduction, involves only one parent plant, and the new plant is genetically identical to the parent. It can happen naturally with some plants, but we most often see it when humans help it along. There are many ways that vegetative propagation can happen. For example, with bananas, a sucker is removed from the parent plant and transplanted. With some other plants, you can have something called a runner, which is what happens when a stem that's still attached to the parent plant grows low to the ground, and then it grows its own roots. And then the runner often remains attached to the parent, but if it's separated, it has its own root system, so it's basically its own new plant, but it's genetically identical to the parent plant. Other methods sometimes might involve taking what um, farmers call cuttings of a plant. These are pieces of stem or roots that can then be transplanted somewhere else. Gardeners often do this in order to move plants or propagate plants that they really like into new areas of a garden or into new gardens altogether. Some animals also reproduce asexually. For example, starfish reproduce through a process called fragmentation and regeneration. So what happens with starfish is that this is a process of asexual reproduction that involves cutting body parts and then the organism will regrow the body parts that were cut and the body parts that were cut will regrow the rest of the organism. So for starfish for example, if you cut out an arm of a starfish, that arm will regrow the rest of its arms into a brand new starfish and the original starfish that lost the arm will have will regrow that arm itself. So technically a starfish has five arms, you could actually grow five starfish by just cutting off each individual arm and each arm will regrow a new starfish around it. This is not the main way by which starfish reproduce by the way, they actually reproduce sexually but they can reproduce asexually through fragmentation and, gen and regeneration. And of course, under this process, you don't need two parents, you just need the one parent, and every single starfish that results from this type of reproduction is genetically identical to the parent starfish. Another animal called a hydra, which is a tiny aquatic animal, reproduces by a process called budding. Budding basically involves the growing of a baby or an offspring that is genetically identical to the parent off of the body of the parent. So the hydra, for example, grows a young baby hydra off of its body and then eventually that bud breaks off and can grow into an adult hydra that is genetically identical to its parent. And more interestingly, some lizards and other reptiles and some amphibians 
have a way of reproducing asexually through a process called parthenogenesis. So parthenogenesis basically involves species of certain animals like certain reptiles or amphibians that have only females in the species and the females will lay eggs and the eggs will be clones of the mother and so they would involve absolutely no sexual reproduction no males and no fertilization just females that lay eggs to their own genetic clones it's rare but there's a few examples one of the most famous examples is a whiptail lizard which is a lizard that is common in the deserts of Arizona and New Mexico that have basically just all females in the species. There are no males, and they reproduce asexually through parthenogenesis. Now, the process of asexual reproduction can have its advantages as well as its disadvantages. Let's take a look at the advantages first. To start, some of the advantages of asexual reproduction involve the fact that there is no need to find a mate. During sexual reproduction, the process of finding a mate can be made difficult, especially if there are low resources available. Maybe there's a low population density and mates are not easy to find. Not having to find a mate makes it very advantageous for those who reproduce asexually because they just reproduce on their own. Another advantage of reproducing without a mate is that it is faster. The process of both finding a mate and oftentimes engaging in some sort of courtship ritual can be time-consuming for sexual reproducing organisms. And so by bypassing that entire process, asexual reproduction can be extremely efficient. Most organisms that engage in asexual reproduction are single-celled organisms that are produced by binary fission, which is a fast reproductive process that can lead to many offspring produced very quickly. However, there are disadvantages to asexual reproduction, mostly stemming from the lack of genetic variation in the population. When all the members in a population are clones of each other, because they are the result of asexual reproduction that produces identical offspring, that results in a lack of what is called genetic variation. Genetic variation basically means there is variety in the genes in the population. When all the individuals in the population are clones, there is no variety. And when that happens, it can reduce a species' ability to survive in a variety of different habitats. That species will be very good at surviving in a particular habitat for which its genes make it successful. But if the habitat changes, or if members of that species move elsewhere, then those genes that made them successful in a particular place might not make them successful in a different place. And because there's no genetic variation, what makes one individual of the population weak makes all the other members of the population weak. The same can be said about diseases. What affects one organism in that species will affect every single other organism in the same species equally because they will all be genetically identical. So if one member of the population is susceptible to a particular type of virus, or fungus or bacterial disease, then every single member of the population would be equally susceptible to that exact same disease. And this has the potential of wiping out entire populations when a new disease appears or when the habitat changes. This lack of genetic variation can significantly reduce the survival ability of asexual reproducers. And so that's it for today's lesson. Talk to you soon.